The path to conception, especially via in vitro fertilization, can be emotionally and physically difficult. But new innovations are helping improve the odds of having a healthy baby. We travel to Chicago, Illinois, to see how cutting edge technology that tests for genomic alterations during the IVF process changed the life of one woman forever. Take a look. It's a typical day for Lori Seward, a field-based employee of Thermo Fisher Scientific, making calls before she heads out to meetings. I have always, since a young age, been interested in science, specifically biology. So I have a bachelor's degree in biology and a master's degree in biotechnology. I've always been in the scientific industry out of college. I was a bunch scientist, been in the genomics industry. Currently, um, I'm a sales specialist in the genetic sciences division at Thermo Fisher Scientific. So I work with leading um, hospitals, pharmaceutical companies and academics. Thankfully, I was able to learn a lot um, about the genetics industry and it changed my life forever. In the course of her job, she learned from researchers and publications about advances being made in genetic testing and reproductive health. I was able to educate myself on the screening tools that are available for inherited diseases and I learned more about the tools available where I could increase the chances um, of having a successful outcome. But starting a family wasn't on her immediate agenda. I uh, was traveling the world for my job, I was developing my career, and it wasn't really until I was about 37 or so that I thought, wow, maybe I think I might want to have a child one day. I'm not ready yet. I know as you get older, um, the egg quality um, diminishes over time. So I was a little bit worried about that. So I wanted to get started sooner rather than later. So that's when I reached out to Fertility Centers of Illinois um, and froze my eggs. She met with Dr. Brian Kaplan, who would guide her along her reproductive journey. So Lori came in at 38 years old and she decided, I'm gonna freeze my eggs. That's a dramatic decision. That's a technology that's right in its infancy. You don't know if those eggs are gonna survive. So that's a big decision for a woman to make at that time on your own. So she did IVF. You have to do the first part of IVF, where we stimulate the eggs, we retrieve the eggs. We got eight eggs the first time. We then froze again a few years later, twice more, and we had a total of 14 eggs. At age 43, Lori was ready to start her family as a single mother by choice. Even with 14 frozen eggs, she knew her chances were slim. 11 survived the thaw. It was time to use the advances in genetic testing to her advantage, beginning with the donor sperm. I chose a donor that had gone through expanded carrier screening. Um, eye color wasn't important to me, ethnicity, it really was based on the genetic profile, and the expanded carrier screening resulted in a clean um, profile so that he was not a carrier for any known inherited diseases. In other words, expanded carrier screening allowed her to identify sperm donors that were not carrier of single gene mutations, therefore in combination with her own carrier status, reducing the risk of having a child with known inheritable conditions. And this also is applicable for couples trying to conceive. Similarly, couples can benefit from knowing their own carrier statuses and decide on their reproductive options if they both happen to have the same gene mutations. Evolution of genetic technology allows us to maximize taking home a healthy baby and preventing disease in the first place. So that paradigm shift which has occurred is as a result to a large degree of genetic testing evolution. One of those tests is pre-implantation genetic testing. PGTA detects which embryos have chromosome copy number change, which we call aneuploidy, which means either having less than 23 pairs of chromosomes or more than 23 pairs in embryos. PGTA can also detect smaller segmental changes of aneuploidy. Chromosomal aneuploidy can account for more than 50% of miscarriages. You then have to fertilize the eggs with a sperm. So now you take another variable into the equation. And we had eight out of 11 fertilized, which is a normal fertilization rate. So already things are going well. Functionality is being proven. Once the egg fertilizes and becomes an embryo, the embryo has to grow in the dish. And it grows for five to six days. So in Lori's case, 
eight eggs started to divide with the sperm. Five made it to pre-blastocyst, embryos that successfully divided to a stage that can grow to the next stage. Four made it to blastocyst and were sent for PGTA. I asked my friends in the reproductive health division for a lab that ran a validated PGTA test and they found iGenomics USA. That was probably the most nerve-wracking time of the entire process, waiting to hear the results. Um, yeah. So out of the four that were sent for testing, um, only one came back normal. I was happy, but I was also sad. I knew that the one I had was a good one. And at that point, I, I really just solely trusted the science. And then I trusted that Dr. Kaplan um, would take over. That's right, the others had trisomy, monosomy, and multiple chromosomal abnormalities. Had she not done PGTA testing, her chance of transferring a normal embryo was only 25%. So without the testing, we would have gone in blind. Most likely if it didn't work the first time due to my age, I don't know if I would have tried it a second time. And, and I definitely wouldn't have had time to probably try it a third or a fourth time. Some official scientific is committed in advancing research in the comprehensive field of reproductive health in order to help our employees like Lori and future generations to achieve healthier outcomes. And meet that healthy bundle of joy, Alexander George, who definitely keeps his mother on her toes, and she wouldn't have it any other way. He is the love of my life. Um, I never in a million years thought the emotions that I would feel and the love I feel even existed. He brings me so much joy and happiness every day. Even if I'm having a bad day. I love you. I had a relatively easy pregnancy. My family was very supportive. My coworkers at Thermo Fisher were very supportive. Um, I really had a great network around me um, that I think helped with, with my pregnancy. The field, especially in the egg freezing, is only less than 10 years old. Lori has already gone through that experience. And just the benefit of being exposed uh, to the field by working in a company, it creates so much joy because it's truly fulfilling the mission that we have day in, day out, why do we wake up in the morning, go to work, so that we can make an impact in future generations together. And when you see a woman like her go through all of this, the intensity, the decision makings, the determination, it's very humbling as a physician to see the resilience of the human spirit. Unless it's against your own religious beliefs, I believe that the PGTA testing is critical. Um, you're investing all this time, money, and effort, your emotions. Uh, take that extra step and get the pre-implantation genetic testing for anemploidy done. Um, it's really going to not only improve your outcome, but it's also going to help avoid a miscarriage um, or potentially avoid some heartache. If you or someone you know is going through IVF, make sure to ask your fertility clinic about PGTA and expanded carrier screening, which allows all to make the best, most informed decisions. Head to our website, thebalancingact.com for more information. And we'll be right back. <laughs>